Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you another comic haul video. I post these every week and I'm gonna be going over all of the comics in this bag, all of these new releases that I picked up this week. Let's roll the intro. All right, as always, let's pull these comics out of the bag. And now we don't need this bag anymore, so let's get it out of the way. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, now that that's over with, finally, let's get into these brand new comics. It was a pretty decent week of comics. I got, um, I think in total seven this week. Uh, this week only just Marvel releases. So let's get straight into these. First up, I've got King in Black number four. Big Marvel event going on right now. Uh, this is the big Venom event, and we've been seeing Null invading Earth and possessing some of the superheroes. Uh, he's on his conquest of the universe, uh, and he's been awoken from his slumber in his, in this, in his uh, prison cell at the edge of the galaxy. Crazy cosmic stuff from Donny Cates. This issue was uh, drawn by Ryan Stegman. The art has been great, the writing has been great. Um, I've heard there's a big twist in this issue, so I'm excited to find out what that is. I really like this cover with the X-Men here. Um, I also noticed if you see, there's all these um, regular looking symbiotes, right? And then we've got this one, it looks more like Null. Probably getting more from the X-Men. Uh, they haven't been a very big part of this event so far. We've only seen some tie-ins uh, from like Sword, and there was a Marauders one shot a couple weeks ago, but uh, I guess X-Men aren't that central to King and Black. They've just been doing their own thing um, on Krakoa, so not many X-Men series have been tying in. All right, next up, I've got Immortal Hulk Flatline, number one. This issue is written, drawn, um, inked, penciled, and the cover um, is by Declan Shalvey. He's doing all of this issue himself. I think he's written for Marvel before, but he's mostly just an artist. Uh, I've been really enjoying these Immortal Hulk one-shots that Marvel has been putting out. They've all been pretty good in quality. They haven't like let me down. They've been pretty much as good as the main Immortal Hulk run, maybe sometimes better. That cover alone is enough for me, but the interior art should also be really cool. I don't know what to expect, I don't know any of the details on the story, but yeah, Immortal Hulk flatline number one. Okay, next up, I've got Thor number 12, another Donny Cates title. It feels like whenever he releases something, there's like always some other release in that same week. I think he likes to put out a lot of his comics in the same week, so. Uh, this is written by Donny Cates, like I said, an artist by Nick Klein, who's been doing a great job on Thor so far. In recent issues of Thor, in this Prey story arc, we've been seeing Donald Blake back from this pocket reality that he's been dormant in for so long. If you don't know, Donald Blake is Thor's alter ego, and uh, it, it was like the human version of himself that he would go into when he was first banished to Midgard uh, by Odin. So I like what the creative team has been doing with um, bringing back Donald Blake. It's a good idea, and now he's evil and uh, Last issue, I'm really excited about this. There was a cliffhanger where we saw um, Donald Blake confronted by Throg, this human that was turned into a frog with a sliver of Mjolnir, who is also worthy, and uh, Lockjaw, who's basically my favorite Marvel character. I really like Lockjaw, and I loved that, uh, that miniseries that he had a few years ago. All right, next up is Guardians of the Galaxy. This is issue 11. Um, issue 12 will be the last issue of this era of Guardians, and issue 13, we still have the same writer, Al Ewing has been writing this, but issue 13 marks the start of a new era of Guardians, with um, a bunch of new teammates added, Doctor Doom among them, super super weird, but I guess we'll see what the deal is with that once that starts. Um, and there's also going to be a new artist, but the art on this issue specifically is by Juan Cabal, and I think he's also finishing off the series with issue 12. This issue, we see them going back to the Annihilation site, which is where the team was first formed during the Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest events. We'll see what leads into this into this new sort of series relaunch of Guardians. All right, now a King in Black tie-in. We've got Miles Morales' Spider-Man, issue 23. This issue marks the return of uh, artist Carmen Carnero to the comic. She's one of the She's one of Marvel's Stormbreakers, which is this program that puts the spotlight on certain artists and they get the chance to work on um, bigger projects for the time that uh, that they're in this program. So I'm glad we're getting a King and Black tie-in out of the Miles series. I don't know whose fist that is on the cover. The cover doesn't really relate to King and Black at all. 
Um, we'll probably just see Miles fighting off symbiote dragons and doing the, the dirty work that needs to be done to, to uh, keep Earth safe during the, during the King in Black. And we'll probably see more action in the actual uh, main issue, issue four. All right, next is Champions Outlawed, number four. Uh, here we see the Champions team with uh, Cyclops, and that's young Cyclops on the cover. But uh, he's not around anymore. Uh, that was a whole confusing thing, but basically the original younger X-Men came to the future and uh, were alongside the older X-Men for a while, but then they went back. But during their time in the future, young Cyclops joined the champions because he was around the, the right age limit, right? It's impossible for him to be actually in here, but he's on the cover there. I think last issue we actually just saw old Cyclops like picking them up and... Uh, and saving them from the Cradle Agents. We'll see what happens in this issue of Champions, but this is the X-Men stepping in and helping them out. All right, only one issue left here. This is Iron Man number six. This is a great, great cover by Alex Ross. This, like, all these lines sort of remind me of when they go into, into hyperdrive, or is it warp speed, um, in Star Wars. We've been seeing this like sort of refined version of Iron Man. All, after all the craziness that went on in Dan Slott's run of Iron Man with uh, Iron Man 2020 right before this, uh, with the robot revolution and Tony Stark realizing that he's not fully human and he's more robot than he is human. All of that that went on, after that Tony Stark just wanted a break so he's wearing a more streamlined version of the armor uh, with less of those gadgets and fanciness. But that also makes it harder for him to fight Korvac, who's been the main villain of this story. Uh, last issue we saw that he's not able to call in the big guns to help with Korvac. Korvac is holding Rhodey, aka War Machine, hostage. And he says that he'll kill Rhodey if, um, if Tony Stark calls in any help. So we saw last issue that he had to hire a group of like B-level heroes. That was that was kind of funny. This issue is written by Christopher Cantwell with art by Kafu. And yeah, we'll see what happens with Iron Man. All right, well, that's every single one of my issues that I got this week. But I want to know what you guys got. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to talk to you guys about some comics. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can also turn on the notifications bell and you'll be notified every single time I post a new video um, if you don't want to miss any. I post these weekly comic book haul videos um, every Wednesday when I get my new comics and I also post uh, like deeper dives into Marvel history um, and breaking news videos on weekends. I've been trying to, uh, to put those out every weekend. That's everything from me today. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.